Today we're joined by Walter to discuss Princess Jing, a game I will show you in a second when Walter wants to get down. You're just being a little fussy boy. So <laughs> today, uh, Princess Jing is a two-player game where you are trying to find the princess in the game. There he goes. So here's Princess Jing. You're trying to find the princess. There are a couple different variants in the game. Um, really, I want to focus on this one component that is really, really cool. I haven't seen it used in another game, and uh, I just think it was really clever that they did it. And basically, uh, you have all these little, uh, I don't know, they're, they're, they kind of represent people, but they're hidden behind these shields, and there's a bunch of these out on the board. Um, you can see what, uh, what's hidden on your side of the shield. So you might have the princess, you might have guards, you might have forest animals, depending on the variant. But here's the cool thing. On some of them, there's a mirror. And so as you move this around, you're trying to use this mirror. So I'm placing this like this so that I can see what's on the, uh, the visible side to the other player. You're using the mirror to do that. And this is just... I thought it was brilliant when I heard about it. I, I think this is such a cool mechanism to use a mirror for visibility um, in places where you couldn't otherwise see. Now, one thing I do want to mention, uh, the first time I played this, I made a dumb mistake, but I have a feeling other people might make this mistake too. These mirrors, see how it's like perfectly reflective? Like this is a real mirror right here. Um, when you get it, actually, you can see my face there. Let's see if we can get that right. Nope, can't do it again. Um, when you, uh, when you first take this out of the box and you have to assemble these things, there will be a protective coating over this mirror that will still look like you can kind of see through the mirror, but it's really foggy. Remove that, that layer. The, I couldn't find in the box where it tells you to do that, but you need to remove that protective layer to get the, the true mirror. Um, but I, I just love the idea in this game that, that it's, it's not just a mechanism to use the mirror, but it's... Uh, to, as, as an element of visibility. So in other games, I think that it might be like, okay, you like tap on the, like in Stratego. In Stratego, you tap on the token uh, so that you can see what it is. In this game, you're actually using your eyes to do something using a component that enables your eyes to see where you could not otherwise see. While I don't think this, this component would apply to many games, like it's, it's pretty rare that you would use this type of component. I think it's a great reminder to designers that uh, that components like this can be can be used in games. And really, I, I bet you can buy these little mirrors online um, if you want to playtest your game and use mirrors in it. I don't think it's an expensive component to make or to playtest with. Um, so I would love to see other games that use these types of mirrors in either 1v1 games and team games. Um, in any game where, where your visibility is restricted, um, and this can add just a little bit of visibility in areas where you couldn't otherwise see. Uh, so yeah, otherwise, overall, just a really cool use of a component. I would love to see this used in other games as well. If you have a favorite component, in fact, I'm going to do, I think in one of my upcoming Sunday sit-downs, I'll do a list of my top 10 favorite components in games. And this might make the list, we'll see. But if you have any favorite components in games that just add something special uh, to the game, um, beyond just like miniatures, custom dice, stuff like that is really, really cool, but really unique, innovative stuff like this. I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Thanks.